So today's topic is selling products in Kartra, and it's probably something that a lot of people on Kartra are looking to do, right? You want to make your money, you want to make sales, and you know use Kartra to your benefit. So when it goes into selling products, what we the real first thing is that Kartra does not process any of your payments. It doesn't handle your money in any way. It won't take any funds from you. Pretty much you have to have some sort of payment processor connected to your account if you are going to be selling products. So it's always a good start when you're getting into Kartra as part of like your account setup to kind of set up your payment processor. Uh, there are five that integrate directly with Kartra and they're on the screen here. Uh, the most popular ones I see are always Stripe and PayPal, right? Um, I do see Square a lot with people that have like in-person businesses, but I know that um, Square is probably not the most popular out of them. Stripe is always usually the number one um, that I'm seeing when I'm going through and helping people set up. Um, we do have instructions for setting up all of these payment processes. It does, it is a little bit of a process, right? Where you just kind of have to link both accounts, but once they're linked, anytime somebody is purchasing one of your products, they and make a payment that payment is just redirected to whatever payment gateway that you have um pretty seamlessly right there's no like they don't have to jump around and see that they're paying through a stripe gateway it's just they're filling out the card to check out and the payment is going to whichever processor that you have there uh in this slide presentation all of these buttons should be links for the instructions so if you want to go ahead and set up your own payment processor you can just use the slide presentation just click on the one that you want and it should give you with the instructions to go ahead and set that up um, it's a pretty easy process but if you get stuck along the way just always reach out to our support team they're very helpful um, and they can kind of walk you through that process see what is missing or what's messed up and kind of um, you know get that all squared away for you the other thing that goes into products is when you are setting up your account you can only select one currency that will apply to all of your products um, so you'll see it in your account profile settings it's it, i'll show you it once we do the live demonstration in a bit um, but you can see here that there's kind of a currency setting with the drop down menu when you click on that menu you're able to choose from the list of currencies that we have available and this is the complete list so far um, so if you're selling mainly in usd or in euros just make sure that you're setting your currency to that and then when people are purchasing your products they'll always be able to see a conversion. So say you're selling things in USD or selling things in Australian dollars, right? If somebody is visiting from Europe and wants to purchase your product, they'll be able to see the conversion of how your pricing, you know, appears to them in their current, uh, their local currency. And it'll always be, I think, you know, I know the exchange rates change all the time. So I believe that the exchange rates are going through daily, Shan, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think the the exchange rates are always applied when that happens. Yeah, think about I think updates every twenty four, like end yeah. of the day. Oops. Yep. So those are the first main things that you know before you're going to even start selling products. Set up your payment gateway so that people are making payments to you and you're actually getting those payments, and set up the currency um, so that you make sure that whatever you know you're selling your products in that is going into the correct currency for you. And when it comes to selling products in Kartra, you can pretty much sell anything like digital products, physical products, subscriptions. Uh, in Kartra, you're able to set up calendar bookings that are, can go with the payment, webinar registrations. There's a lot of different things that you can sell. Pretty much anything that you can assign a price point to, uh, you can create a product for in Kartra. Now, when it comes to like physical products, it is a little harder just because you kind of have to manage the shipping of all of those products yourself it's not like Kartra is going to manage those so you'll see all the sales come in but you still have to you know be responsible for making sure that all of your physical products are distributed to the right place whereas if it's something digital like a membership um uh, access or just setting up a calendar or just any sort of downloadable file right um, you don't really have to worry about that information too much because you can always set up the process where people are getting those deliverables automatically the only thing you really have to worry about is if you are selling physical products just some sort of process on the back end for you to make sure that all of the products or sales that you're getting you're shipping them out to the correct place And when you're selling products in Kartra, there's really two things that you need um, when you're setting up a product. 
and those things are pages. So the first is going to be a sales page. This is the main page that you plan on selling that product on. When you're setting things up like your products, it's always going to ask you, you know, what the sales page is and what the success page is or the thank you page. And that's the page people are going to right after they purchase your product. So with that in mind, it doesn't have to be a traditional thank you page. It could be a download page if you're giving like a, some sort of file or if it's just, you know, a sales funnel that you're setting up, maybe just think about where where is the next page that you want somebody to go after purchasing your product? Um, you can always put that in the thank you page slot because that is the page, again, people are being redirected to right after they fill out some sort of checkout. Um, if you don't want them to be redirected, you can just put your sales page in as the thank you page, right? And that'll keep them on the same page that they were. Um, so always think about your flow when you're kind of uh, setting up your pages, you'll always notice, you know, you can't create a product unless you have your sales page and your thank you page set up. And then once you create your product, it'll look something like this in the product section of your account, and you should be able to access the checkout. So I have it squared here. Um, you just click on that checkout and it'll provide you with a link. So if you're using like, um, you know, I know a lot of people use third party websites like WordPress or something like that. You can just take this link and put that into like a button on WordPress. Or if you're using it directly within your Kartra account, you really don't have to worry about this checkout too much because you can just embed the product directly into like a Kartra page, right? Uh, but that is what you get when you create a product is always that checkout link that you can, you know, send to people to access and purchase that product from you if you need to just sell it individually. And of course, managing sales. This is something that we'll get into a little more just based on your questions, because there is a lot of different things that can, you know, you can go into when it comes to managing your sales with Kartra. But Kartra is really good at providing you with all of the information that you need, whether it be, you know, you'll see all of your sales, you'll be able to refund payments, cancel payments, uh, edit payments if somebody, you know, made a mistake, update credit card details, right? All of those tools are at your disposal. I think at first for beginners, it's just a little hard to kind of know where to go to access all of this information, but we'll be go, going into this a little deeper here in a little bit, just kind of showing you where you can access all of this information and edit those transaction details as needed. And lastly, our support team is great if you ever need help. So if you're creating your products, you get stuff, just make sure that you're reaching out to our help center. Uh, if you guys have been with Kartra for a little bit, the help center has changed recently. So there is a different process if you're reaching out to our support team. Um, but, you know, it's pretty much support team is the same. They're still as great as ever. You can reach out at any time because they work around the clock. Um, and then we also have all of our guides available as well within that help center that you can access. And that is pretty much just a quick overview of, you know, everything products, just kind of giving you the topical information. Like I said, this slide presentation should have been delivered to you guys in the chat feed so you can download it and access it yourselves. Uh, and I'll send it to you guys in the follow up email, too, so that you can uh, access it there. Now, let's go yeah, let's, into. Yeah. Um, what? Real quickly, there's three questions. Let's just get those covered real quick. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, just a really important one. I think uh, when you mentioned setting up um, the thank you page and the sales page prior to creating the product, um, mm -hmm. basically they're they're wondering, do you need to create the product before the sales and thank you page or vice versa? So just kind of explaining that. that yeah. Part. So I'll kind of, let me share my screen and it'll be a little easier for you guys to understand. So when you're setting everything up in Kartra, obviously your products will be done in the product section of your account. In order for your product to be complete and for you to have the checkout page link and all of that, you will need to have those pages created just because the system is requiring them. So when you're you know, creating anything in Kartra, there's always kind of this step-by-step -step process, right? Where you're just filling out all of the information with your products. You'll see this pages section here. This is going to be that one section that if you don't have complete with your pages, you won't be able to finish your product. So yes and no, you can create your product without having your pages, but you won't be able to finish it. You'll see like a red X or a red mark on the pages section just because the system wants to know, all right, what is the sales page for your product? What is the thank you page for all of your price points, right? Um, if you don't have that information, you're not going to be able to finish creating your product. One thing you can do is always use like um, placeholder like pages. So like you can put something like google.com, right? If you just want to get your 
product created real quick and have it like go live. The only thing is you just want to make sure that you're always changing these back once you have the actual page created. Um, otherwise, you know, this is going to affect redirects when people are, you know, interacting with things. I think the product page shows up if somebody is you know, sees your product. And I think there's like a place where it says, if you don't own this product, like, you know, go here to see more information or get more info about the product. And that'll always link people to this page, like the, whatever sales page that you have for that product. And then for the thank you page, again, it's always the page somebody is going to after they purchase your product. So thinking about your product funnel, your sales funnel, if it's a thank you page, go ahead and send them to a thank you page. If it's, you know, another website page that you want to send them to, you can send them to a different website page. Otherwise, if you don't want to redirect at all, you can just keep them on that same sales page that you had before. Um, it's really up to you when you're kind of setting all of that up there. Hope that answered your question, right? Um, you'll see that, and there's a few things in Kartra that you'll need pages for. Products are going to ask you for your pages. Forms, when you're setting up forms, it'll always ask you for a thank you page. And I think uh, memberships will ask you for a sales page when you're setting that up too. Thank you, Alex. And now you want to go ahead with the rest of the demo? I just wanted to clarify. There's not really an order per se, um, yeah. but it helps to have things done um, so that yeah. you can complete that action on that step. So I'd say if you want like the best order as possible, create your pages. So create your sales page, create your thank you page. And when you're creating those pages, you'll always have like buttons or, you know, product checkout placeholders, right? So just leave the placeholders, the buttons there unlinked, create your products. Since you have your pages, you'll be able to link them. And then you got to finish off by going back to your like sales page and replacing any of those like buttons that say buy now with your actual product link. And I'll show you those things uh, in a little bit here. Um, but let's just go through the product setup, right? So in the product section of your account, um, if it's blank, you'll see all of your products here, right? If not, it'll just kind of be an empty thing and you just have this plus product button on the side that you can click to create a new product. And every time you create a new product, it's going to ask you if it's a main product or an upsell, downsell. If it's an upsell, downsell, it's going to ask you for what is the main product, right? What is the you know main product that people are purchasing before the upsell or downsell is provided to them? Um, but we'll go into the main product here and I'll just you know, use a product that we already have created just so you can see the settings and we'll go through them all together here. Um, and of course, like we've mentioned before, any questions about anything, just put it in the chat feed. We'll be happy to answer that for you. Um, but product details. So this is kind of like general information about your product, like what's the official name, what's the description. And these things are going to show up on the checkout form when people are purchasing your product. So it's a good idea just to like keep a vague but public description official name right you always want to make sure that that information is it's public facing so you always want to make sure that it's something that you know your customers are going to want to be able to see and then you'll always have this marketplace thing so what a marketplace is is you're able to list it Kartra has like what's called an affiliate marketplace where other Kartra users can see products that you have you know, created and are sharing, and they can apply to become affiliates for those products. So if that's something you're interested in, if you have the affiliate uh, program enabled, I think you have to be on the growth plan for the affiliate features. Um, you can set it in the marketplace and then it's just free marketing, right? You have other Kartra users that are able to see your products and can say, oh, maybe I wanna, um, you know, become an affiliate for that um, without you kind of really having to do anything from your end. Otherwise you can just keep it private and you can still use the affiliate settings if that's what you want. It's just not gonna be listed publicly in the Kartra marketplace. Next is the payment processing. And this is where we're going into the payment processors that we mentioned earlier. Like I said, there's five different ones. Uh, now, something unique about the payment processing is you can choose your credit card gateway, right? And you can also use PayPal so that if you have, you know, Stripe and PayPal, your customers have the option to pay by credit card or pay through PayPal. The only thing is you can't have multiple credit card processors. You can only choose one. So you can't use like Stripe and Square. Uh, you can, you have to choose either Stripe or Square, but you can have like, Stripe and PayPal or Square and PayPal, right? Uh, PayPal will always be kind of um, in addition to whatever card, card processor that you have there. 
Now the pricing is probably going to be, I guess, one of the most important parts because this is where you're setting up the structure of your payments, right? How, are, how much is your product cost? How are people paying you? Um, there's a few different options. So there's the one-time payment. So if you just want people to pay you like, you know, in this example, $50 right away, um, one time, and then they get the product. So, you know, obviously pretty straightforward. Recurring is like it sounds, if you have a ongoing bill. So something that I guess only cancels unless the person is canceling or you're canceling for them, it's gonna recur indefinitely. Um, you can set that up. So maybe we want like, I don't know, this is $20 every month, right? And you can set that up. And I think there's a few different uh, recurring timeframes for you to choose from. Um, installments is like recurring, but there's a limit on it, right? So we can say $20 for, um, you know, every month for six months, right? Um, and that's pretty much, you know, they're recurring and installments are the same, whereas installments, like it sounds, you're only, once you reach the installment limit, you're done paying that price. And then the final one is recurring installments. So if you, um, it's this one confuses a lot of people when they first hear it but say like you have twenty dollars monthly for six months uh every year so every year somebody is paying twenty dollars for six months and then they're free for six months and then once the next year starts they have to pay those installment fees out again so those are the four different pricing options there's also one additional price point that you can add which is the enable initial payment so if you are the type of person that says maybe you have a recurring thing that's twenty dollars monthly but their first initial payment, you want to be something different. Maybe it's a hundred dollars initially um, for, you know, oh, that's the period. Maybe it's a hundred dollars initially for a month, right? 30 days, right? You can do that or you can just do one month uh, in that case. Um, so they're paying a hundred dollars initially. And then once the second month comes, they're paying that $20 uh, until you know, it's canceled, right? You can also do things like a trial. Like I think our Karcher trial is kind of set up with that where it's just a $1 30 day trial, right? So that's kind of how the initial payment is just that $1 period. And then after that, they're billed for the, um, you know, standard pricing after that. So that's what the initial payment is. If you kind of want to make that first payment, something different than whatever you are normally charging for and then default price so with your products you can create multiple price points um so maybe if you want to sell it as you know a one-time payment of fifty dollars but also give someone the option to pay for it uh you know with installments and if that's too much for them right you can set up all those multiple price points and then you can choose which price point you want to be the default one so that's going to be the one that you know is listed first and people have the um you know the one that you basically want prefer people to purchase, right? Uh, so no matter which price point you can set up, I think there's a limit. Um, I'm not too sure what the actual limit is. Probably 10 um, is usually what we have limits on. But like I said, you can choose one of those 10 to set as default price and that'll always appear at the top or first there for you. Alrighty. Um, now that we got pricing out of the way, shipping costs. So if you are selling something physically, obviously if it's digital, you don't really have to worry about this, but you can set up your um, shipping costs for all of these things and you can choose it by destination. So if you're shipping like somewhere locally, you can say, oh, this one's you know, that one price. But if you're shipping like internationally, maybe you can set another price for that international order as well. Um, and then you can apply the shipping on a cost or per unit basis. So uh, you have those, uh, I guess differentiators there when you're setting that up. Below that is the sales tax. Now sales tax is a little bit more advanced. I'm not too uh, well versed with all of these sales tax here. So you can always reach out to our support team if you need more information with that. Um, but basically how the sales tax works is there's this uh, sales tax section of your account where you can basically go in and enter, you know, the sales tax values for certain regions. And you really only have to do it in regions that you're going to be selling your products in. Uh, but just something to note is you're, you have to kind of enter that information manually. The uh, values aren't there by default. So just something to note there with the sales tax. Let's just go back into the product here. And we were on the pricing step. 
So as you can see, like pricing is probably the most, I guess, extensive section. Pricing and I'd say post-sale are gonna be the two sections where you're really filling out a lot of the information. Um, and lastly, in this section is the refund policy. So you're able to say, all right, no, these people don't get a refund or they're available for a refund within you know this amount of day period, right? Um, and then if they reach out or cancel within, you know, within that refund period, they're able to automatically get that money back. Um, Alrighty. So we already went over this a little bit, but the pages, right? So your product page is always the main page that you plan on selling this product from. You could always, you know, I assume sometimes people are selling their product from multiple different pages. That's perfectly fine. Think of the main page, right? Or the page that provides the most information about your product. Because again, people are going to access this product page if they want more information about one of your products. I'll show you the checkout uh, form soon. And there's like a little link on the checkout form that says, you know, get more details or get more information about this product. And that'll redirect person that or whoever clicks that button to this page. So uh, something to note there, you might be selling this product on multiple pages, always just include the page that um, is the main page for your product or like, you know, the page with the most description. Uh, and then, of course, your thank you pages. And you'll notice here that it's going to ask you for a thank you page for each price point. So if you are the type of person that is sending people to different destinations based on which price point they purchase, you can just make sure you're creating all of those different success pages and then you can link them here. Whereas in my example, I don't care about, you know, what price point they're purchasing. I'm just sending them all to the same success page. So. Alrighty, now the checkout step. This is how pretty much like the checkout form when you're collecting the information. How does it look? How does it uh, present to people? Um, so you have the default Kartra hosted checkout page, which is pretty simple. You don't really have to worry too much about the design. You just have like all of these little buttons here are, are a different design. So you can kind of click through and see how they are um, and choose, you know, the one that has the branding best to you. You know, matches your business the best, I guess. Um, otherwise, you can do an overlay pop up on your site if you're doing kind of a third party um, or embed the checkout form if you want to do that option. So these are more if you're using it outside of Kartra. Now, the checkout page header logo. So if you want to display your own brand logo, you can do that at the top of the checkout page. Um, and then you can embed the Kartra help desk icon. So a help desk, again, only unlocks at the growth level. And if you are on that level and you have set up a help desk for your customers, you can include that on your checkout page so people can easily go ahead and access that help desk. Um, and then checkout form fields. So these are all of the mandatory form fields, right? When somebody's purchasing, they're always gonna wanna, you know, get the first name, last name, email address, right? Uh, city and postal code for any shipping, things like that, right? Billing details, all that pretty standard stuff. Of course, you can always add additional fields if you want that information. So say like you're selling, um, I don't know, maybe you're selling uh, consultations and you want to get people's contact information or get information on like what times are best for them. You can always choose like an existing field or create a custom field for any sort of information that you want to collect during the checkout process. And of course, you're able to, um, you know, I'm pretty sure you can designate whether or not it's going to be mandatory or not. Yep, you always have this indicator down here. Product quantity. So obviously it doesn't matter if you are selling digital things, but if it's a virtual or a physical product and you want to limit the amount of um, you know, units that somebody can purchase, you can go ahead and set that up here in this uh, section. So you can say, um, you know, there is a maximum number of somebody can only order five, right? So they can have order up to from one to five, but they can't order more than that. So you can set limits on the quantity if that's something that you want to do. Express checkout, just like it sounds, I always just activate it there. So what Express checkout is, is if somebody has already purchased a product from you in the past, the next time they purchase a product from you, all of their information will auto-populate. So they don't have to re-enter all of their details. Um, they can just 
quickly go to and click pay now and all of their information is saved by cookies and they can go ahead and you know quickly purchase without having to fill out and go through the standard checkout process otherwise if you use the full of checkout experience every time somebody purchases they just have to go through that full checkout experience like it sounds right um so I always just say, you know, activate it for your repeat customers just so it makes it easier for you to make sales with them. Um, otherwise, if you still want to make sure that they're entering all of their details, um, just use the uh, no useful checkout experience option there. Um, card abandonment tagging, just like it sounds, if somebody is starting to fill out the checkout form and then leaves without paying, um, the system will tag them so that you know, all right, these are all the people that were interested and then canceled at the last minute for whatever reason. Um, terms and conditions. So like all this stuff is pretty straightforward, right? Um, but it's just the details going into it. So you're able to enter your own terms and agreement labels if that's something that you want to do. Um, and then for, you can do it for each price point if that's something that you need to specify. Otherwise, you can just use one terms and conditions for all of your price points. Um, and then you just have your title label and the billing terms, um, which you can, I don't think there's any limit for the amount of space that you have for the terms, uh, just the label there. And of course, yeah, you have it always forces them to require them to agree before they purchase, right? Uh, if you're adding these terms and conditions. And then lastly is the bump offer. So if you want to offer another product, you know, during the checkout process, you can go ahead and activate it here. You'll just you'll have to have that product created, obviously, and then you're able to just select that, um, you know, product from the uh, from the drop down menus here and you can do it for each price point set up a bump offer um, but we're just going to leave them off for now all right next is the post sale step and we're almost done here right uh, there's i'd say when you're setting up a product there's not too much that you have to fill out it's just you know mostly the pricing the post sale and your pages that you're setting up um, but when you're in the post sale step, it's always going to ask you, you know, what is the customer list, tag your customers, basic automation. So pretty much everything that you set up in Kartra will always have these. Typically, it's like the automation step that you see this in. In products, it's labeled post sale just because there's an extra um, accessing your product contents section here. Um, but these are all basic automation. So when somebody purchases your product, do you want to add them to a list? If so, you select the list per price point. Um, same thing with tags. If you want to tag people when they purchase, you're able to do that there. Um, and then any other automations you can set up down here. So like if they purchase product or you'll see a bunch of other options, like if they cancel a subscription, if they request a cancellation, then do something else, right? Unassigned tags, grant access to membership, right? All this basic cartridge automation stuff. So this is how you're always um, moving people around on the back end when they complete or in this case do anything with this specific product and then the most important step in this section is the accessing your product content step this is what somebody actually gets when they're purchasing your product so in this case i have this product set up as a cartridge membership so when somebody purchases this they're getting access to um, a specific cartridge membership tier whereas you can do with every membership that they're on the file that it's just like Hey, hey, Alex, I think your mic's going in and out. I don't know if it is for anyone else. Oh, it's not working. It, we can't hear you. No. 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 It just sounds like um, staticky. Now it's not working at all. Do you hear me better now? Yes. Perfect. I just had to switch my microphone. I guess my. Uh portable microphone just stopped working i guess um i have a little desktop on i guess yeah it was just staticky really staticky for a minute so okay uh maybe go over the last section that you just read that's when it started like about a minute oh yeah this part 
There we go. Cool. You're muted. <laughs> I say it's pretty much the most important step. Sorry for the technical difficulties, guys. Uh, when you're setting up your products, just because uh, this is actually what somebody's getting when they purchase your product, right? So in this example, I have it linked to a Kartra membership. So I'm selling access to a course with this product. So you're just linking each price point to that membership, right? Uh, you can do an integrated membership if you're selling like a third party course or a downloadable file if it's just like an e ebook or something that you're distributing digitally um and then no access page if it's something else right so if you're selling access to like a cartridge calendar or a webinar or if it's a physical product or if it's like so something custom like you're not exactly giving them a downloadable file um you can always do no access page and kind of send someone on that journey either through email or from the thank you page as to show them how they're actually getting you know access to what they purchased but Again, I'm using a Kartra membership for here, and then you're just linking the membership to each price point. Um, and then, yeah, we went over the automations there. All right, and then lastly is affiliates. So this is only unlocked, again, if you have a growth level plan. Um, so not everyone is going to be able to access the affiliate program, but if you are the type of person that is setting up an affiliate program for your products, you're basically, these are all the product settings here. So you can say, you know, yes, I wanna set up that affiliate program. And then for each price point, you're choosing, you know, whether they're getting a percentage of the, of the total price or a fixed amount, right? Um, there's also JV Broker, which is like an affiliate for affiliates. Um, so there's kind of two levels to the affiliate program, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, and then affiliate program on opt-in. So that's like the other thing. So you can basically set up an affiliate program for sales or for obtaining leads. So if you want, you know, to basically give people commission for growing your email list, that option is available there as well. Alrighty, guys. And that is it. Those are all the product settings. There are a lot of other settings that go into it. Like I said, well, not product settings, but like product tracking. If you are doing like ads and you want to see, you know, how your products are performing, like where your traffic is coming from, right? Uh, you have coupons if you want to set up discount codes for people and how the coupons work. They're pretty simple. You're just entering the name of your coupon code could be pretty much anything. Setting the discount type kind of like the affiliate program, whereas it's a fixed amount or a percentage. And then you're choosing that amount that they're getting off. So maybe if you want to say like, uh, I don't know, people are getting 30% off if they enter this coupon code, uh, then you're selecting the product that it goes with. So we'll choose that you know product example. Um, and then you can also say it applies to all payments, first payment only, first few payments, right? There's a lot of things you can do with discounts. And then last but not least, you have the expiration rule. So you can say this coupon expires on a specific date or this coupon expires when, um, I don't know, 50 people use it, right? Um, a lot of different options there with coupons. And that's how you're applying discounts, right? Um, Next is the sales tax, like I showed you before, if you are selling physical products or if you want to apply sales tax to uh, your products, you can set it up there and that'll be applied when everyone is purchasing. And then the self-billing portal is basically the place that people are able to go to kind of um, edit their own billing details. So like say if somebody's credit card payment gets declined or uh, their credit card expires, they're able to go here, use this link um, to, you know, update their credit card details, download their invoice, uh, refund, get a refund for their products. And you can disable these things if you don't want them to be able to do things. But this is just like a self-billing portal for your customers so that you don't have to, you know, they don't have to reach out to you for every single thing. They can kind of just manage it on their own if they ever need to. Um, and in this section, I think uh, when you're setting up your products, if you are the person that has a help desk, it'll replace the self-billing portal Otherwise, the self-billing portal will just be available to uh, pretty much anyone there. And of course, you can change the self-billing portal link uh, if you ever need to, if you have like your own domain. All righty. Um, I know we uh, I've been talking for a while. I kind of want to get into your questions and then we can go into a little more analytic stuff. If um, you guys want to know about all that, like if there's specific transaction subscription data that you guys want to see, but pretty much with how the analytics area works is you see all of your sales in the sales section. So that's, you know, 
how everything is performing. Uh, then you have your affiliate section where you can see how all of your affiliates are performing for each product. And then you have transactions and subscriptions. So transactions, the difference between the two transactions is for one-time payments. So if somebody is making a one-time payment to you, you'll see it always under the transaction section. Whereas subscriptions are going to be where you're managing all of those recurrent payments, installments, right? If somebody has is paying you um, indefinitely, you're always going to see that information within the subscription section since it's like an ongoing thing, right? This card just kind of separates the two. But alrighty, um, and then of course, with any analytics in Kartra, you can always download uh, the information as needed. Awesome. But yeah, and let's uh, get into your questions if you guys got them. Oh yeah, what are I you going to say, Shannon? I was say I have a big list. Um, I kind of broke them down into types. Okay. A few people have similar ones. So I'm going to start with a specific type. But I did want to um, just cover something real quick. Um, financial advisory had asked if we were using Kartra webinar for this, and um, for our live events, we actually use um, this Google Meet Room because we want you guys to be able to raise your hand, um, ask questions. We want to be able to see your faces. Like we really want this to be as interactive as possible where we can connect with our customers. So we do not use Kartra webinars for an event like this, but we have used Kartra webinars for um, big product releases where we're just demonstrating how to use um a new feature that we released or something like that um, yeah. so because we want these to be more interactive we use google meet but we um the webinar feature is um a great thing to use to educate as well and we do host these calls through Kartra though we use a calendar mm -hmm. instead so mm -hmm. we use the Kartra calendar and you're able to set up um you know live events one-on-ones with the Kartra calendar uh, i think we're using the live event model for this one yes and it yep. integrates directly with google meet and zoom so obviously we're using google meet um and if you're more of a zoom person you can use that option as well yep awesome well let's get to the list um i'm going to start with um the first one um is which is the payment integrations the five native ones um like i mentioned the five native are stripe um square Authorize.net, Braintree, and PayPal. Um, so you will need to have one of those five payment integrations to be able to set up your checkouts in Char Kartra and be Car Kartra. Um, and then also to be able to collect payments through Kartra. If you plan on using a different payment integration and you still want to collect the lead information and maybe you know give them access to a membership you created or a calendar or anything in Kartra, uh, you will need to use uh, Zapier um, to bring them in to the system um, from that specific payment gateway, um, you will need to make sure that Zapier um, can connect the two as well. So there's a, a little bit of um, information you might need to find out. Um, specifically, the question was, is there a way to use Ideal, um, which is a Netherlands payment, or M NMI payment integration soon? Um, so people are asking about new payment integrations. Um, anything? Any extra questions about payment integrations while we're on this? If you want to raise your hand, feel free. If not, we'll move on to the next. Um, okay. 